Hey guys, so today I'm talking about a problem every gardener has and it's going to strike your garden eventually and it's aphids, spider mites, and other soft-bodied insects. And like you can see with this rose bush, by not monitoring it closely, it's been attacked. But I'm going to show you a very simple solution to get rid of these problems and you'll only have to monitor it maybe once or twice a month. And one of the main ingredients are these right here. So let's head out to the greenhouse and I'll show you exactly how to mix up this formula and it will work every single time for aphids, spider mites, and any of those other insects that you have on your plants, indoor plants or outdoor plants. So guys, aphids, spider mites, and other soft-bodied insects can do quite a bit of damage to your plants. It doesn't take long and they multiply and reproduce so quickly they can devastate a potted plant, an indoor plant, or plants in your vegetable garden. Before you know it, you'll see leaves wilting and your whole plant will die and you may not even realize what happened until it's too late. So the purpose of the video is to show you exactly how to mix up a product that's perfectly safe, natural, organic, and it will take care of these pests without doing any chance of damage to your plant indoor or outdoor. So guys, one of the first things I showed you at the intro of the video was these little red spheres, red and white spheres. And this is just common peppermint candy, but it's one of the first ingredients I'm going to talk about. And it will not only take care of the aphid, mite, and soft-bodied insects, it can also repel other insects that might come to your plant. And just the smell and the natural repulsive nature of this to insects will keep them away from your plants before they have a chance to completely infest. So if you never smelt real 100% peppermint oil, it's quite an interesting thing to see the difference between synthetic peppermint and real peppermint oil. So it makes a huge difference, especially when it comes to creating our all-natural organic pesticide. So the next thing we're going to talk about is 100% tea tree oil. And this has antibacterial and antifungal properties, and that can help with the damage that these insects will do to your plants. They leave behind sometimes something called sooty mold and that can do a lot of damage to your plants. I had an entire huge gardenia bush that was about eight feet tall and about six or seven feet wide and it was completely destroyed over a short amount of time before I could apply this product. So it can do damage, these insects can do damage over time and eventually kill a massive plant just by leaving this residue behind. Now the next thing we're using is a Castile soap and it is made from vegetable oils and it's, there's no animal products in it. And so this is something that will suffocate the soft bodied insects. And this is really a safe product because it's safe for your soils, it's safe for your plant, and it's safe for yourself. You don't have to worry about it having any toxic effects on you, your plants, or the surrounding environment. Now the last two products we're gonna use is 70% alcohol just common rubbing alcohol and we don't want a higher concentration because there can be additives to 90 80 90 percent so we just want a nice 70 percent rubbing alcohol and that's going to work best we're going to put about one to two cups per gallon depending on what type of insect we're controlling but for aphids spider mites and your soft-bodied insects i think two cups may be necessary especially for heavy infestations now the last ingredient we're using is a three percent solution of hydrogen peroxide and it is really got a lot of added benefits in addition to its reaction with the insects it can stop larva growth egg development and so that's something you want to use for that but it can also help with root rot with your plants and other issues that might come up with diseases so this is really important to add all of these together so you can have the perfect solution i'm going to show you exactly how to do it and how to apply it to your plant so guys, I'm going to start by mixing our product up and I'm going to start with our essential oils and I'm going to do on the tea tree and peppermint, I'm going to each do one teaspoon. So we're going to do one teaspoon of each of those because they are quite potent. These are 100% pure and so it's going to be just one teaspoon of each. And so I'm going to try to get this out with a dropper. I might just could pour it in there, but I want to get an exact amount because the strength of this is going to be really overpowering for insects and it's going to drive a lot of insects away and it's just going to have a really beneficial effect but a lot of times a lot of peppermints and tea tree oils are not pure so make sure you buy a 100 percent pure version of it and you can i'll put some links to these as well now the same thing on the tea tree we're adding one teaspoon to our mixture 
and it would probably be a little quicker if I just poured this, but I don't want to make a mess by overfilling it. So we're doing one and one on the, our essential oils, and they are really potent. I spilled a little bit earlier on my table, and now it smells wonderful here in the greenhouse. I think it's the best the greenhouse has smelled in a long time. So we have one and one, and we're going to have to do a little bit of mixing. We're going to have to agitate our sprayer once we get it in there to make sure these essential oils do mix well. So the next thing we're adding is one cup of our rubbing alcohol, 70% rubbing alcohol to our mixture. I'm just going to pour that in there. And the last thing we're adding, or next to the last thing we're adding, is our hydrogen peroxide. We're doing a solid tablespoon. And this is, particular one is about half a tablespoon. So we're going to put two of these to equal one tablespoon. And the last thing we're adding is our Castile soap, which will smother the insects. We're going to put one cup of this into the mixture. And this is a smaller size bottle, but these comes in a lot. These come in a lot different size bottles. Sorry, I know that's probably driving you crazy. But anyways, one cup. So that's nearly the entire bottle. Now this doesn't have a super long shelf life, so you want to reduce the mixture by half or by 75% if you're just doing a single plant, and you can make it as you need it. But I don't think it's a good idea just to leave it and set it on a shelf because it will lose its potency over time. Now that we have all our ingredients added, we're just going to stir it and try to mix it well in our larger container. And then I'm going to transfer it to our sprayer where I'm going to agitate it and mix it even better. If you set it down for even just a small amount of time, 30 minutes to an hour, you're going to want to pick it up and agitate the sprayer again. Just shake it so it's well mixed. So you make sure that those essential oils don't separate from the other liquids. So we're going to add this to our sprayer and then we're going to treat our plants. And in this case, I've got indoor plants and some plants in the garden that need to be treated. So this will work well on both. And there you have it. Now we're going to go on to application and some more tips and advice on what to look for when you're talking about aphids and spider mites. This will also control ants as well and other flying insects. Now when you're applying this to your plants, you want to make sure you spray especially under the underside of leaves, which is where a lot of the aphids and other insects like to hide. They get protection from predatory insects by hiding under the leaves. So you want to spray underneath, and that's the great thing about these solar sprayers. You can come in and spray from below, and then you can spray directly on them, and then you can spray from above as well. So I highly recommend these. I've been using them for years, and I think I have three or four now in the shop. But anyways, this is a great sprayer that I like to use on all my plants, and it just works great every time. So if your infestation is really severe with spider mites or aphids, you want to do this about every three to four days, and you want to do it at least for two weeks in a row until you don't see any more on your plants. You want to kill that life cycle that's going to keep going unless you destroy it and stop it from reoccurring over and over. Now the best time to spray this will be early morning or late afternoon so you can avoid any potential issues with sunlight, really harsh sunlight hitting the plants and causing a potential leaf burn. So that's one thing, early morning, late afternoon. If you're treating an indoor house plant, you also want to make sure there's good ventilation in the room. You don't want the air to be stagnant. You want the plant, the solution we're putting on it, you want it to dry naturally, but you don't want it to remain saturated with it for a long period of time. So just make sure you have good ventilation in the room. Now, indoor plants can be more sensitive to things that outdoor plants can tolerate quite a bit better. So just do a patch test on your plant, on the indoor plant, and Probably not a bad idea to do the same thing on outdoor plants, but specifically indoor plants, you might want to do just a small test area to see how the plant reacts to your solution. Now, when it comes to treating plants that you have outdoors, you want to make sure that you watch your weather forecast because if you apply this and then you have a, a moderate to heavy rain, it's going to wash the solution off. So just make sure that you do that. You'll do it and get a heavy rain and you wonder why it didn't work. Well, it might have been washed away by that rain. So just make sure you monitor that before you apply and make sure you're going to have several days without rain. Now, one thing that we rarely think about when it comes to our outdoor plants and our indoor plants for that matter is prevention. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And so doing this is a preventative about once every two weeks on plants that may have a problem in the future, if they're susceptible to this kind of thing, and most outdoor plants can be, go ahead and apply it every two weeks so you can prevent the problem from happening and you can save your plants a lot of stress. So in this next section, I'm going to talk about identification and being able to visually recognize these pests. And I'm going to sprinkle in a lot of photographs of the mites, aphids, and other insects that are very commonly attacking your plants. And also there's an interesting 
symbiotic relationship between ants and aphids. It's really interesting, and I'll talk about that as well. So aphids themselves are tiny pear-shaped insects that come in a variety of colors, sometimes green, sometimes almost a dark black, but they can be on the undersides, on the stems of plants, and so they can be all over the plant and you not even realize it because they're so well hidden. A lot of times you might see ants living in the same area as the aphids and that's because they're actually farming the aphids for the secretion that comes out of the back of the aphid which is a honeydew. It's a sweet substance and they will actually protect the aphids from predatory insects. So sometimes if you try to introduce something like ladybugs to the plant and wonder why the ladybugs just fly away, there may be a protective colony of ants on those aphids. So the spider mites can look so small, it's actually hard to identify them without a magnifying glass, but they are just gonna look like a tiny dot, sometimes red, sometimes other colors, but they will cover a plant, and you'll also see some webbing, sometimes on the soil, sometimes around the leaves, and they can multiply so quickly, they can kill a plant in a very short amount of time. In addition to the webbing you might see, you might see curling leaves, yellowing leaves, and that's two other indicators that you might have a problem. And just by looking under the leaf, you'll see those spider mites if that's what's bothering your plant. So by applying your mixture at different intervals and different days, you're disrupting that life cycle of repeating the often deadly aphid and spider mite to your plant. So just remember, you want to do that. You want to keep repeating that cycle about every three to five days until you break the life cycle. So after you apply this mixture to your plants, it makes it very inhospitable to the insects. It dehydrates them. The smell can prevent other insects from, com from coming in and bothering your plant. So it's a suffocating effect on the aphids and spider mites, but also a repellent to insects that may come in other varieties of insects, especially the ants and other flying insects. So if you want to enhance the repellent property of the mixture, you can also add in eucalyptus or eucalyptus oil or rosemary oil as well and that can also act as a repellent you can mix and match but just the main reason a lot of the the uh, really strong smelling oils are there is also not only for killing the ones that are there but also repelling new insects that are coming in to attack the plant so as far as spraying a large vegetable garden I always recommend using one of these a battery controlled sprayer. I used to have the, originally I had the pump kind. It was a lot of work, especially in the hot summertime. It was exhausting, but this has a battery on it and I'll link one below, but it really makes it easier to mix up, quadruple the formula, put it in here. This will hold up to four gallons. So I can do that and go over an entire vegetable garden at one time and I can do an entire treatment without, without having to go to all the trouble of mixing it in a smaller sprayer. So I always recommend that triple size your formula or even more depending on what size vegetable garden you have. So as far as the life cycle of aphids, at some point aphids will produce winged aphids where they can spread out to other plants and infest an entire garden. That's why you need to keep on top of this. If you have a small aphid problem, it's gonna turn into a very large one rather quickly. If you're, plant if you're planning on overwintering plants and bringing them indoors, then it is an absolute necessity to do this before you bring them inside because if you already have house plants, they'll spread from plant to plant. And before you know it, your indoor house plants will have an aphid infection where they never had it before or a spider, mit spider mite infection as well. So that's one thing to remember is that when you're bringing plants from the outdoors to the inside, it might be a good idea to do this treatment a day or two before you do that so you can knock them down before they come inside. So talking about spider mites and some ways to identify that they've infested your plant is look for webbing on the plant. That's a really strong clue that you have a spider mite infestation. Also, spider mites re reproduce rapidly as well in hot, dry conditions. So the peak summer months, the hottest months of the year is when you're going to have the biggest chance of spider mites. Also, spider mites come in different colors. You can see them in red to green to yellow. So make sure you do a ins thorough inspection of your plants because spider mites come in a lot of varieties as far as colors, but size is always very small. So a lot of times when you are having these type of problems with spider mites, soft-bodied insects, aphids, whatever it might be, the reason they're able to attack the plant and its natural self-defense is of chemicals it might produce on its leaves, they're quite stressed and a lot of times that allows the, the infestations to happen. So it could be from underwatering, poor soil nutrition, 
and things like that. So you just want to make sure that you're taking really good care of the plants. So you may not even ever have to worry about this if the plant is in its optimal condition. If it's in its optimal condition, the plant sometimes can fend off attacks from these as well. Now, a lot of people's advice on controlling aphids might be to order some ladybugs from the internet and that's really not a good idea because one the ladybugs often will not stay in your garden and they'll just fly off and you wasted a substantial amount of money for that the second is is often these ladybugs are not harvested in a farm they're harvested from the wild so they're taken out of their natural habitat and they might introduce diseases to your existing populations of beneficial insects such as ladybugs so that's one thing i would avoid is purchasing ladybugs on online unless they have a special farm where they're growing them and it's kind of unlikely a lot of these are just taken from the wild and put into boxes and shipped to you so as i had mentioned earlier that this formulation not only will take care of your ant problem aphid problem soft-bodied insects and other insects and it acts act as a repellent towards incoming insects the other thing it might help with is, and I think I mentioned this earlier, but I just want to mention it one more time, is fungal issues and bacterial infections. You can spray the soil directly and it will help with that as well. So that's really important to remember that it can help with those issues as well. So guys, I hope this helps you with your issues on aphids and preventing them or getting rid of a severe infestation. It's really a very safe way to go, a natural, all natural way to go. And it's going to work, I think, better because sometimes these type of pesticides and things there could be a resistance buildup and eventually they don't work as well as they once did so that's something that's happening happening in a lot of parts of the world is overuse of industrial pesticides so if you can find a natural solution with natural ingredients i think that's always the better way to go so i just want to say thanks so much for watching i really appreciate every view every comment and if you have something to add please do so i like comments of any type good bad or otherwise so have a great day